Good morning and welcome to this morning's webinar, which is all about the 101 for Instagram stories and also going live on Instagram. I'm Dante St. James. More from me once we share the screen. Let's just get this underway and have a really good fun morning of exploring what you can do in Instagram stories and with Instagram uh, going live as well. Some of us might have done it on Facebook, but you can go live on Instagram as well. Let's go. This is brought to you by Business Station and the Australian Small Business Advisory Services Digital Solutions Program in conjunction with Regional Development Australia Brisbane for Queensland and delivered in the Northern Territory by Treaty Business Consulting as well. My name's Dante, as I said, and part of what I do is work with Facebook Australia's uh, Lead Trainer Network and Blueprint Lead Trainer Network and the Australian New Zealand Community Trainer Network as well. There's seven offices in Australia, two in New Zealand, and um, at the moment we're kind of Rounded by COVID things, we can't do a lot of traveling around the country, but what we can do is do a lot of webinar-based stuff. And thanks to the ASVAS program for enabling us to be able to deliver this to more people as well. And hopefully you'll get a few extra skills out of this one today. We've got a few people online this morning. Thank you for joining us. The chat window is open, the Q&A is open. So if you've got questions along the way, please don't be shy. Put them in the Q&A or the chat window and I'll answer those live as we're going along if I can. Anything I can't answer, I'll park it and I'll go and try and find some answers for you later. But um, obviously the answers I'll give this morning have nothing to do with the current news stuff that's going on around Facebook. Um, I don't have any information on that. And I don't have any sort of um, ways of helping you through that at the moment until we know more about what the, the conversations between government and Facebook Australia and New Zealand happen to do. What we will cover though, is sharing photos and videos through your, your Instagram stories. We're gonna look at using the creative tools that are out there to help you make better Instagram stories and how to interact with your audience when you do those. So it's very, very similar to Facebook stories if you've ever done that, but it allows you to attract your audience's attention a bit more because stories on Instagram are kind of becoming the default. We uh, Even a year ago, we would have said out of the billion people on Instagram that about you know 500 million of those were active on stories. Now that's approaching that billion. Stories are becoming in certain demographics, certainly younger ones, the primary way. And even I've noticed a subtle change in the way that I've used Instagram. I'm now going definitely for the little bubbles on top, much more than I'm doing scrolling through the feed. In fact, the feed is seeing the like be quite boring where the stories are where like most of my enjoyment and entertainment seem to come from. So I'm really enjoying working with the stories because they're just fun and they're a little bit more lighthearted. And I don't feel like everyone's trying to be an influencer in stories. They seem to be a little bit more focused on being themselves and businesses being themselves and letting their personalities shine through that little bit more. And a little bit later on too, once we get past stories, we'll look at going live on Instagram. So you can even leverage that audience as well. And as we know, some of us have a lot bigger reach on Instagram than what we have on the blue app, don't we? So I want to introduce you to a fictional company called The Lucky Shrub. Lucky Shrub sell uh, a lot of succulents. They sell a lot of like, you know, very well packaged, you know, packages of pots and shrubs that are made for indoor use mainly of those who have balconies and small gardens, but they don't have a lot of room to move. They're going to be kind of what we're going to do um, as we do a lot of the, the examples of what comes through stories today. So for those of you who've never used stories, you open the Instagram app, you tap on a profile picture up the top. So not your own one, someone else's since he's lucky shrub, for example, you hold down on the screen, to be able to pause if it's a video going through. If you want to pause because you've just got a phone call or something, just hold down the screen to pause, pick up the other phone, say hello, if that's what you're doing. Uh, or if the case is you just want to pause on something because you want to, to like see what they're exactly doing, yeah, just hold it and that will be help. That'll help to hold it in place for you. You can tap on the left or the right side to watch. So in other words, you can go back to the previous story and watch it again, or you can go forward to the next story. Now, quite often, as you'll see, there's multiple bits of a story that happen. I call them chapters. I don't think it's what they call. I think they're just called stories individually. But I look up and see Lucky Shrub's got one that they just played. I can go back by tapping on the left of that video, or I can go forward by tapping on the right-hand side and skip over that one. Or swipe is really good for going backwards and forwards through those as well. You can react to anything with emojis. Now, how you do that is you swipe up. So in the middle of the video or the photo, swipe up 
and it will bring up this little quick reaction. So you can do whatever the most common reactions are. Usually the, the laughing, the love, the crying, the, the shocked, the applause, those kind of things will give you an opportunity to be able to react and interact with other people's stories. But when it comes to you sharing your stuff on Instagram stories, this is where you can really start to shine, where you can put yourself in the center of the picture by sharing your photos and your videos on Instagram stories in a new format, I guess, if you've not used it before, that's a bit more interactive, a bit more lifelike, a little bit more real and authentic. So you can, this is kind of like the thing about stories. It's all about those unfiltered moments from your day. It's not so much about the perfectly curated stuff, the, the perfect feed and the perfect pattern and the perfect pout and the perfect smile and the, the perfect lighting. It's about those unfiltered, unedited moments of your day where you're going, okay, this is a mistake I made or this is a lesson I learned or this is an amazing moment that I had. It's about capturing those moments and bringing to the fore into a format that really works for the way that people consume content on social media today. Stories have appeared on almost every platform. Even LinkedIn has stories now if you use the mobile app. So it's a part of what has come through from, I guess, from early days of Snapchat where they did quite a lot of this and the stories format was very much something they led with. Instagram came in with it, Facebook's got it. Just about every platform has story. Even YouTube these days has stories that you can add in there. It's kind of crazy. The whole idea is to create that very quick fire moments from your day. So you're sharing throughout the day. One of the things we get about social media, particularly those who work with social media managers, is they feel like that there's too much social media to do in a day. It takes too long. There's too much of a commitment of time required to keep posting perfect stuff and killer content all the time. Stories give you an opportunity to be able to post things that aren't so perfect. And why would you do that? Because you want to put across the best picture of yourself. Because in addition to you being a business, you're dealing with people, everyday people who want to deal with people they can relate to. Not everyone needs to look up to the business they're dealing with. Sometimes they just want to feel like they can walk into a business and not feel judged. Stories gives you a way of showing that you too are as human as what they are. You can show off your products or services in the case of Lucky Shrub, some of the shells where they've got some of their potted plants or they've shared, okay, this is what they're like. You can do the same whether you're selling plants, chocolate, headphones, glasses, um, homewares, fashion. You can show off some of those products and services in a less curated and perfect way. It can be, okay, it's the crooked shelf or it's the not quite perfect rack of clothes, but you can show that and bring it out and show how it looks in the daylight or take it out in the street. So this is what you're going to look like in the daylight. Or you can pick up you know, a piece of um, one of your homewares and say, okay, this is what it looks like on the shelf. Now you're going to pick it up. This is what it looks like on the table. So you give people an opportunity to be able to see what your product or service looks like in there. Products obviously lend themselves really well to stories because they're physical. You can pick them up and you can put them somewhere and show them off and take a photo and take some video of them. Services are a little bit different because they may require you to be in action. So taking screenshots or you know, sharing video of you interacting on Zoom or with a team viewer with your clients or actually in a room where you record part of that and the client really likes the idea of you doing that can be a great way of showcasing what it is you do in short, quick bites of, of, of video or in short, quick bites of photography. It allows you to tell your business's story in a bit of a different way. So rather than here's our end product, stories give you a chance to tell the story, funnily enough, of how to, the background of your business. So for instance, Lucky Shrub, who I said they're fictional, they actually are a real business. They just get used as a lot as an example, have a, a studio they work with. And on that studio, they can be eating their breakfast, working on their laptops, potting plants. It's just an interactive space where their staff work on. So when they're working in there, here's a bit of a shot that's up on a shelf showing this is how our day goes by. This is what we do first thing in the morning. We check emails. It's helping you to tell the story about what's behind the scenes of your business rather than just what the perfect result is of your business, particularly if you've got a very visual product like these guys have. You can share customer reviews really nicely on stories and they just look so much better on a story because it's a full video or full screen experience on a mobile. So you can put quite lengthy reviews like the one we're showing on screen right now and it allows you to 
really share that through and you can add stickers and images like they've done with the sticker below with the flowers. There's a range of stickers that are in there. You can add lots of different elements. You can place that text over the top of an existing photo or a photo of the client or a photo of the plant that they bought or a photo of the garden that they've done. So if you're getting feedback from your clients and your customers about how they've applied your product or service to their life, this is a great place to put it. It doesn't clutter up your feed and it comes in and goes within 24 hours. And that's what stories are. They do come and go within 24 hours, though you can save your stories into what's called collections. So if you go to your own Instagram profile, you'll see that there's the ability to be able to add existing stories to collections. Just do it within that 24 hours, okay? To make sure you've got the option to be able to put it in there. As you're going, you can separate your, your, your um, stories into different collections that point to certain parts of your business. Say for instance, you're working in travel. So you wanna show travel to New Zealand, travel to Queensland, travel to Western Australia, travel to Tasmania, all of those can be little collections that then you can collect different things that all apply to the same category within those collections. Or yours could be the blue collection. If you're selling blue dresses, about the sneeze, sorry. I'll just have to quickly mute this out before I do. It's not coming, it will come, I know it will. Hopefully I can mute in time so I don't, I don't expose you to my horrible sneeze. It's a quite a loud one. I'm one of those people that sneezes at an airport. Everyone looks and goes, Corona, is that you? <laughs> I'm actually catching a plane a little bit later today. So hopefully that won't be such a problem. I get all the sneezing out of my system. So the idea is with those collections that you can put in, if you're selling blue dresses, red dresses, yellow dresses, pink dresses, you can have a blue yellow dresses, yellow dresses, pink dresses, um, what have I missed? Blue dresses um, sections in, in, your, in your collection. So you can gather things together. If you're selling chocolate, you can have light chocolate, dark chocolate, um, milk chocolate, chocolate with fruit in it, chocolate with nuts in it. And you can have different collections that have lots of different stories in them that relate to that particular collection category. It's actually a fun way to categorize and highlight certain things that you want to keep on your profile aside from just those perfect profile pictures and perfect profile videos. One thing I love to see on the, on, on the stories as well, and they're really well when they're saved into collections, is tutorials, how-to content. The kind of content where you save, uh, okay, this is how you use our app. This is how you plant a plant. This is how you uh, pour the perfect chocolate. I'm referring to chocolate a lot today. So don't, I, I must be really craving it. Or this is how you make the perfect coffee. Or this is how you use needlepoint. Or this is how you make a handmade card or how you produce paper from pulp. So all those different things are the how-to that comes to your physical product or even to using your website or instruction on how to use your app can be really, really easily done in a story and then saved into a collection on your profile. So you've always got how-to content in those collections in the bubbles at the top of your profile page on Instagram. So how do you create those stories? Let's actually go and make a few stories, I suppose, and get an idea of how you can do this awesome stuff. So taking a photo or video, you do from the stories camera. So the stories camera is, um, let me go backwards. So you can do it through the camera, which is through your story. So where it says your story, you add the plus, that opens up the stories camera and allows you then to start making your own stories. It's a lot of fun, or you can just do it through the plus button at the top there. And it'll ask you whether you want to change, want to create a feed photo or video, or you want to post onto stories. So the plus button, or click on that little plus button on your story, and that will start the process for you. Now you can change the mode of the camera, whether you want it to do a story, a reels, a post, live video, all happens down here. But one of the other modes you can do is change it from being like a, a layout video or a layout um, story, which is uh, like a collage of different shapes, a boomerang, which is backwards and forwards stuff. It's all built in. So they're all part of the Facebook app now. Used to be separate apps. Now they're all folded into the one. You can do multi-capture where you're capturing front and back cameras. That is only with compatible phones. I think iPhones do it. And I think the Google Pixels and most Samsungs are able to do that as well. You can also play with some of these filters down the bottom, which allow you to put different effects on top of your story. Or what you can do, if you've already got the perfect video or photo somewhere else and you want to integrate that into a story, you just tap on the little album down the bottom here and that goes through your camera roll. 
and through your camera roll, you can pick out the photo you took before yesterday or three days ago or two weeks ago, bring that up and then put it into your story so it becomes the background. It'll automatically shape it in and crop it to the shape that fits into an Instagram story screen, which is basically just the size of your screen on your mobile phone, right? One of the things that's fun to do is apply filters. So those filters can be anything from just making things a bit more blue to making things black and white to making things a bit more red or pink or whatever the overlay is that you want to do. It lets you create some kind of consistency. So if you have a brand feel and a lot of um, a lot of personal care products will have a feel that's very stark and very white and very, very clean and very minimalist. Or if it's something like um, in fitness, for instance, you might want everything to be in tones of slight reds because slight reds are really kind to skin tone, especially if you've got lighter skin, that's very kind to your skin tone. You find if you've got darker skin tone, it also helps to smooth out those bumps and lumps a little bit more. I don't know, I'm not too worried about all that because I'm not gonna be wearing tight clothes. But if you do, and you're a bit worried about skin tone showing up not quite so perfect on stories, then putting a sort of a more reddish filter over that will actually help to clean that up a bit for you. So a few tips on how to get the most out of your stories. And there's so many tips I could throw in your way that really give you an idea of how you can do so much more with them. I guess the first one would have to be that adding text is probably the most basic 101 thing you can do to any video or any kind of um, photo that you want to put on stories. So there's, ideally you can just do text with a, not just putting text in, but you could have background over the text. So if you've got a very complex photo with lots of colors and shapes in the background and you just can't quite make that text stand out, you can put a background on it. So you can highlight what they call a highlight. So you can highlight the text. So it's got like, that, like you have there, a green background with white writing, which fits in really well with Lucky Shrubs uh, aesthetic where they've got lots of green plants white backgrounds so they reverse that and do green background with white writing there's also a number of different fonts you can work with so you're not just stuck to that particular font you've got more handwritten kind of fonts more curly fonts more um what i call curly and girly i guess is where you want to put like really pretty stuff in there or you can do very big block stuff that's really quite strong and harsh and trying to put forward a message with lots of exclamation marks a lot of people do love their exclamation marks you can draw stuff. So for instance, if you wanted to highlight around, say this little candle setting, you put your little stroke, those yellow strokes around it. So you can just squiggles and do little love hearts and you can even write your name or write stuff on there. If you've got um, like one of those little styluses that you can draw on your phone with, that can make it a little bit more accurate. Big fat fingers like mine don't tend to write very well on screens. So you might want to use something that's a bit better like a stylus to do that with. Or I think the Apple Pencil may work with an iPhone. I have no idea. I only just bought an iPhone for the first time in about six years. So I don't even know how half the, uh, half the things work on it. But you can use these kind of little tools to change the color, do lots of different effects and just make your, your story feel that little bit more bright and cheerful and a bit more personalized. And that's so much about what stories are. It's making that little bit more fun, a little bit more flirty, a little bit more personalized and a little bit more, I guess, able to show the person you are, not just the business you are. Because ultimately people buy from people and they buy from people they trust. Adding stickers can make it a lot more playful. So in the case here, they've got little love hearts that they put in. Um, you can throw emojis as stickers. There's even some moving ones or ones that have um, interactive stuff. So one of those more interactive things can be something like a location sticker, which then if you tap on Lucky Shrub, that will take you through to Lucky Shrub's location on Instagram, which is often their profile on Instagram. So go through and see the other stuff that's on your profile. Other things can be um, things with... Uh, with the temperatures, what the temperature is right, the time where you are, the location or city that you're in. It can be a hashtag that goes in there as well. If you've got a specific hashtag you want to link through to when it's tapped, it takes you through to a feed of everything that's coming through on that hashtag on the Instagram app. Or you can put something like you know, a poll. You can actually poll people and say, I want to, um, should we use, do you want the, do you prefer sage or do you prefer basil? Um, in the case of where they're planting their little um, their herbs there, or do you prefer um, 
tall indoor plants or short indoor plants and people can slide over or tap on their preference between the two i know quite a lot of time i'm one of my favorite comedians amy hetherington she tends to uh, do a lot of polls on her facebook and instagram stories where she says should my next gig be in darwin or tennant creek and people who are following her will vote for what they want to vote for it creates a little bit of fun a little bit of engagement around it so if you can do that you know if you again back to chocolate white chocolate white chocolate dark chocolate milk chocolate dark chocolate which one's the favorite one for you um or do you prefer you know, chocolate with fruit or just chocolate on its own or do you prefer cafe lattes or ice long blacks all those little different things you can do to make it a bit more fun and a bit more interactive will really help to lift the mood that goes on on your pages and on your profiles too and it makes it just it's not as hard to set up as what the perfect shot that's being filtered to within an inch of its life will be on your, on your feed. It just allows you to have that little bit more fun. And as we said earlier, this is getting used more and more to the point where Instagram have been sort of toying with the idea for the last couple of years. And I do know one person who's got a test version of Instagram that does this. And instead of when you go into Instagram, you've got one line of stories and then you go down the feed and you flick through, there's now two lines of stories and you flick through the feed, which gives us an indication that stories are becoming almost the default way that you'll deal with Instagram. So if you're not doing them, it's probably a good idea to start experimenting now just before they become the primary way that people will deal with on Instagram. For under, under 30s, it almost is in every case, the primary way that Instagram is used is through stories. So if you want to get on board that train, now's really a good opportunity for you to experiment a bit, have a bit of fun. It's not going to harm you. It's not going to be a bad thing. It's just going to give you a little bit of a head start. You can also mention other businesses with the at mention sticker which allows you to then put a sticker on there that people can tap on that will take you through to the feeds of those other people. So if you want to go here, you find our best indoor plants over at the at Lucky Shrub shop, it means that they tap on the at Lucky Shrub, it takes you through to their to their feed, to their um, to their profile. So you'll see that and you'll be able to click on there. They've got a shop on theirs. So you can tap on the shop and then you can see what they have for sale. And in their case, buy directly from Instagram. Boomerang layout, as I said before, layout creates more of these collages. So the one on the right creates the ability to be able to put multiple photos or videos on the one screen. Um, so that's just a very simple top and bottom layout. Or you can do something like a three panel. So one big long one on one side, then two on the other side, or one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, or one, two, three. Lots of different layouts are available in that. Boomerang allows you to go forward and back which is a video presentation because then I could actually show you that what they're doing is picking up the picking up the water and taking it away and then it comes back again, picking up the water, taking it away and putting it back again. Or in the case of if you're in a um, place which is a hotel, motel, you've got a pool, boomerangs are really good for that. Jump in the water, jump out of the water, jump in the water, jump out of the water. Great for fashion too. You can do the back and forth or, okay, this is what looks on the front, spin around. This is what looks at the back and on the front and on the back and on the front. So it gives you that interactivity. And ultimately what you want to do is don't produce boring static stuff on stories. Try and do video where you can because it's so quick and you need to get it over and done within five to 15 seconds anyway. It gives you the chance to do things really quickly, really easily, rather than having to obsess about every shot being absolutely perfect. So creating interactive stories is a bit of a technique which allows you to do a little bit more than just simply producing something to broadcast a message. This is where you actually want to create feedback from customers or from people who are following you, like your fans. You can put poll stickers. I was talking about how Amy does this. Amy Hetherington does it. In the case of this one, which plant should we talk about next? The Monstera or the Fiddle Leaf Fig? I always vote for the fiddle leaf figs. I think they're the most ridiculous looking plants ever. And I know that when I had one in the past, I nearly killed it. And then I got some tips from a local nursery on how to not kill it, which is don't keep moving it around different parts of the house. Put it somewhere and leave it there. Let it get used to the conditions. Let it grow. That's my tip for gardening for the day. You know, Q&A stickers where you go ask us about indoor plant care and someone can post that and it is posted to a message to your DMs, your direct messages within Instagram, which is a great way to get people to engage with you for something that they want to talk chat about outside of Instagram and to you personally. It allows customers to have a, a portal into you for support, for customer service, for tips and tricks, for any kind of thing. So it could be, what's the one thing that you would like most in chocolate? And you can type, I'd really like to see a chocolate that actually has freeze dried raspberries in it or something like that. And you can answer back what it is that you will do through an Instagram direct message. 
Your quiz stickers allow you to have a little bit more in there. So you can have more than just the one option or the two option. You can have three. So how often should you wear your sucking? Three to five, five to 10, 10 to 15. I don't know what the answer to that is. I'm going to say five to 10 because that's how often I water mine. And it's usually just like a few drops. That's all it really, really needs. I may be getting that wrong, but they haven't died yet. So that's a good thing. <laughs> you can have a stay at home challenge. So challenges are ways that you can um, get people to come on board a particular topic that's very topical right now. So it could be the stay at home challenge, which is how to, um, you know, the things you're going to do, post something that you're doing at home every single day or what you did to order in something to ensure that you stay at home and you haven't gone out for dinners and all that sort of thing. Challenge stickers, donation stickers, you can tie into supporting particular charities, which is a really fun way of going, you know, of, of associating yourself because it's important for any business. I know you, you stay out of politics as a business, but you also need to sometimes take a stand on the things that you believe in. So if supporting, say, the, um, the RSPCA, in this case, they say the ASPCA, the American one, you might support the RSPCA, you might support PAWS, you might support um, you know, White Ribbon Day, you might support um, Pink Ribbon Day and Breast Cancer Research Fundraising. If there is a, a particular charity, you can put a button on there that helps that charity out. So people who follow you can hit the donate button and give some money. Much the same way, I guess, when you've got birthdays on Facebook and you're able to nominate a charity that will benefit from people donating for your birthday, um, you can do the same on Instagram stories and just insert a little support box like that. So a few little advanced tips to get a bit more out of Instagram stories. Things like using a consistent color scheme. I was talking before how you can use filters to create something sort of consistent branding feel across all your posts. We well, can do that with using a consistent color scheme. These guys they know they work with a lot of greens and whites and blacks. So they use a green and a white when it comes to the, the, the font and the highlight color they're using. So they're always trying to do the same kind of feel and something what they do is that very, um, I like to call it say the, the New York loft style feel, a little bit of timber and sort of, you know, better blocks and very, very basic rustic kind of furniture and very basic minimalist kind of photography as well, where they're just using a lot of daylight that they've got in their particular studio where they can work with, you know, plants that are very much fitting within circles, circles with plants in them, and then not much in the background going on. You can experiment in rainbow text. This is hard. I keep trying to do this. What it allows you to do is choose, you know, a couple of different uh, colors of text. You highlight the text at the same time, and then you pull across the color section and it will create a rainbow effect through your text between one extreme color and the other. So it's like a gradient text, but if you have multiple colors selected across that, this is something which you're going to have to pick up and try and experiment with yourself because it actually, my fat fingers can't seem to get it right. I've never been able to get this one right. Hopefully there'll be some way they'll make it a little bit easier for you in the future because um, yeah, as I said, my fat fingers, they don't do so well with this, but nice little slender fingers, which I'm hoping you've got, are going to do that a little bit better. Adding floating words and stickers. So to allow these things to sort of float, allows you to have, as, as a video moves up and down or backwards and forwards, you can have the text stay in place. So as you're moving things around, the text either stays in place or it can float up and down as you're going up and down the different um, areas of that particular photo or that particular video. So we've just got the Air Force flying over the, at the moment. So hopefully you're not hearing too much of that. It's the uh, bombing of Darwin anniversary day where I live in Darwin. This is the um, anniversary each year of when this city was bombed in 1942. So um, there's a lot of uh, military pageantry going on at the moment and including flyovers of Air Force jets. So I apologize if some of that noise does come through. Key takeaways from this particular section is tell your story with Instagram stories. It's a great way for you to be able to do a little bit more with a whole lot less. You can use those creative tools to make your photos and your videos a lot more playful than what they were before. Neither than just plain video with you talking, add some stickers, make it a bit more fun and flirty and interesting. And you'll see your engagement go up because you've actually reached out and given people a chance to be able to interact better with you. You can experiment with interactive stickers to engage your audience and get that extra bit of engagement out of them, get them to vote in a poll, get them to give you feedback, get them to pick from a, from a poll of things that they would prefer to see. Ask them what they think of the stuff that you're producing for them. And you can learn a lot more about stories 
in Facebook's blueprint. There's of course, not just about Facebook, about Instagram as well. Same company, same products, and they're all nicely integrated. So you can check out the Facebook blueprint just by Googling that or going to facebook.com forward slash blueprint. Now we can ask questions at any point along here, but what I might do is move us along to our second half, which is all about um, your ability to do live video on Instagram. So I'll just quickly get that shared up as well. So we can keep on going. So stop that share, <laughs> open up the other share, which needs to sit on this screen. I'll give you a running commentary of this. That's always entertaining. Watch the, watch the guy on screen, try and give you a running commentary of what he's doing. Okay, I've got that going. Let's share it and we're on. So live video on Instagram is uh, again, just like your stories, something which is very valuable to do from a mobile phone, but also very highly interactive. It allows you to show a bit more of yourself and a bit more of your personality than simply just posting something on a screen and hoping for the best. So if you're doing live video, um, what we might look at today, we're going to cover a little bit about what Instagram Live is and how it works. A lot like Facebook Live, very, very similar in fact. We're going to show you how to share live video on Instagram, creating a plan for going live as well, which I think is really, really important rather than just ad hoc going, oh, I'm just going to share live. Having a plan helps you to garner more of an audience. And if you've got more audience watching, you've got an ability for more people to be able to do the thing that you're setting out to do. Knowing what your objective is when you go live helps you to stay on track and helps you to become a more effective marketer for your business rather than just candidly just going out there. Hey, I'm going live because something wacky is happening. That's not going to get you a lot of following and it's not going to, it's, it can annoy people when you go live without warning. One of the great things, I, I follow a, a coach called Polly. Uh, she's in Catherine in Northern Territory. And one of the things she does is 7.30 every single weekday morning, she goes live. You know, it's like clockwork. She is on there going live talking about a particular topic. You know, you can trust it. You know, you can go with it. But what she doesn't do is just go live ad hoc all over the place. She likes to know that her audience knows when she's available. Her audience knows when she's going to do something that has some significance. It makes a difference. People start to build routines around the people they like to follow. So if you can build a routine of people following you, then you're much more likely to get them to tune into you at that particular time. But it does allow you to do that ad hoc stuff too, where you can get people to engage with you in very real time. They can leave comments, they can leave messages, they can leave reactions that let them that you know that not just they're watching, but they're actually enjoying what you're doing as well. Instagram Live is really, I guess, an opportunity for you to take the stories experience just a little bit further. So you can go on Instagram to broadcast videos, your followers in real time. But when you broadcast live video on Instagram, your followers also receive a notification based on whether they've got notifications turned on or whether they want notifications for your particular account. If they do, they get a notification pop up on Instagram saying X is now live or in the case of Lalure Beauty is now live. You can tap on there and it takes you straight into that live stream. And how you join that live stream then is via um, the profile picture from the story tray, what we call that, or you can click to join on your live video directly from the profile. So once people are viewing your live video, they can share it with other people, which often happens when it's something really interesting, particularly if it's something from maybe a celebrity. Celebrities got a lot of extra following this way as well. Um, they can leave comments, they can leave likes, they can donate to a cause if you're connecting a, a cause through to that as well. And it just makes, I guess, a lot more interaction possibility because it is live, it is raw, it's very real. And it's something which you're able to do, I guess, you know, at the drop of a hat or the best ones have done with plans. Like the ones like Polly does, she does it every morning at 7.30. I follow her like clockwork. It's one of the first things I wake up to on my day. So when you go live regularly, you can stay connected with your followers. You can introduce a whole lot of new products and services if you've got those. So if you're doing things like skincare, if you're doing stuff like essential oils, you can bring those together. And you can also bring your community together as well to share your expertise. Live video is actually a great way of you showing what you know and how you work and what you work with and, and how people can get more out of your products and services. So you can try lots of different ways to engage your viewers when you go live on Instagram. Um, for example, let's look at the idea of bringing a community together, um, having employees share your talents with the community. 
So for instance, if it's all about, okay, here's this awesome thing that we make, or here is this great hairstyle that we do and these highlights we're able to put through your hair um, to keep customers connected to what your business is capable of doing. You can then share your expertise. For example, you can host some live classes, which are always really fun because sometimes things just go wrong with them. <laughs> it can be quite funny. Or you'd learn new tips to do in a real world where they go, well, this would normally work when I've got the perfect environment. I'm staying in a hotel, um, so I'm not quite able to do quite the same things that I can do at home. Uh, for example, those live classes can be demos. So if you've got a product, you can have a demo. If you've got... Um, you know, if you're not launching something, you can just take something you're already doing and be able to talk about it. But the whole thing with live video is not just to be a talking head. If you're just being a talking head, just talking to a screen, there's not a lot for people to engage with. Actually be doing something like demonstrating the beauty of having a, a thermal bottle to keep your water cold for longer which is my excuse really just to have a drink of water then. But that's an idea you could use is to go, okay, this particular thing it does, and this has been sitting on my desk for two hours with the lid off and it's still cold. So thermal bottles are great. And the example of that could be, you can say, okay, this is how you, here's my hand sanitizer that's at my desk. Here's how you use hand sanitizer. You squeeze it in your palm all around there. I always then rub my, my fingernails down my palm so the alcohol gets in the fingernails as well. Then I rub over the top as well. That could be a really good demonstration on how to use hand sanitizer. Using something that involves things that people can do with your product or things that people can learn more about with your service means it's less of a talking head on a screen and it's more of an interactive demonstration of your expertise or that product or the expertise with that service or sharing, for instance, turning around your phone and pointing at your screen and showing people what you're doing on a screen that shows your expertise in that as well. You can share new products or services. Now, this is, I guess, the, the, the more traditional way of using a live, which is saying, hey, okay, I'm launching something new. Here, have a look at this. Um, and then in a particular case of where you've got an Instagram shop set up, you can then tag products in there so that you can show that, okay, here's where you buy the thing that you're doing. But that's only if you've got Instagram shopping set up. Um, most people won't have that yet, but you can do it. You set it up in the commerce manager of Facebook, and then you can have it go out to both Facebook shops and Instagram shops as well. You just need to have somewhere for people to buy the stuff. So if you don't have it a Shopify site or a WooCommerce site or something like that, probably won't be much use to you yet. That said though, you can still link off to this website by saying, hey, check out this link here or some really clever things. I've seen people hold up pieces of paper and then going, okay, on this piece of paper, see that, let that address there, that address go there. Sometimes it can be quite fun and quirky like that. You can also engage with the audience live during the session. So people can ask questions in the comments and you can say, okay, I'm going to answer that question for you. There's a number of features that make going live as interactive and as fun as you can make it. So to help make your live succession, your live session into a bit more of a, a successful session, there's a few features I'm going to show you which help you to creatively engage with the audience that you're going to talk to. So the first thing is prepare. <laughs> sure, you always prepare before you start, before you go live, tap the wheel icon in the top left corner, and that determines who can actually view your live broadcast. That means you can make it more private, so it's only certain people, or you can open it up to the public or just to your followers. And it also lets you know who can reply where it saves. So if it's going to save to your phone or whether you're going to be able to save it to a collection or something like that, and then how that can be shared or if it can be shared at all. If you want to keep things private to a particular community of people that follow you on a page that's closed to just particular people, then you can select that in these gears as well. You can welcome people in. Now, if you've been going for like an hour and you're constantly just going, welcome, Wendy, welcome, Andrea, welcome, Christina, welcome, Angela, welcome, Christy, welcome, Kirsty, welcome, the. it just gets a little bit out of control it, where it just begins to feel like it's just you welcoming people in the room and not actually adding any value. Say hello, introduce yourself to your audience for a few minutes as you get. Now, quite often this will be starting early. If you schedule your story to be at say 7.30 in the morning, get on at 7.15 and do all the welcoming stuff and the saying hello to people so that when people come in, they've got limited time at 7.30, all that stuff out of the way and they can just get on with the content. You can maybe even pin an introductory comment to the comments below. So down here with the comments, start 
to come through, you can actually pin a particular comment there, which is your one. So it could be something like your your live video rules. If you've got um, if you've got a question, please post it below. Or if you've got a question, I'm not taking them in this session because I've got to run off to work, but email me at blah. So that could be a way for people who um, either joined later on to see what the, the what the interaction can be because they may want to interact with you later on when it plays on Instagram or they may want to, um, they may have come in late to it and they're not really sure what the rules are and you suddenly got people like, you know, inappropriately yelling out things in the comments and not doing quite the right thing you'd like them to do. That pin thing makes a big difference. It allows you then also to have a message or a brand message or even a link to your website that's constantly sitting on there. So to keep your audience engaged right throughout the session you're going to go live with, take a little bit of time to acknowledge those comments that are coming up. So if someone asks you in this case, what color are you using? You can come back and say, oh, this one's like a light pearl overlay. The actual lipstick color though is peach and mango. And you can acknowledge those answer questions throughout the session, much the same way we've got with live here um, on Zoom. And you can click with comments from your audience and they'll appear at the bottom there. So right down the bottom, what color you're using, you can answer those along the way. That's probably the, the, the best way to, to create some sort of interactivity and some sort of sense of community and humanity in your live videos is to actually acknowledge people as they ask questions that are on topic with what you do. Now you can also say to people like, I can't answer all questions because sometimes I've been on some lives that I've done myself and it's got out of control. There's so many questions, I can't even keep up with them. So I say, guys, I'm just not able to pick up all of these questions that are coming through, but let me just um, pick up the ones I can as I see them and I'll answer them as they come along. This can also be very helpful if you've got a personal assistant who's also on the live and they're beside you going, okay, I'm taking down all the questions and they're passing them to you on a piece of paper. That's what I would have liked to have that day. I just wasn't particularly expecting the live that I did on the day when I was overwhelmed with questions to have that many people in it. Um, I thought, what is so fascinating about it? what I do? It turns out that day, I was a very fascinating person. <laughs> You can answer questions along the way. Um, you can invite, you can even invite other people to join you. And that's one of the things I really, really like is that you can take one of these particular questions and view it on the screen, pull it up and you can see some questions have been asked in order. So that allows you to tap on one and answer that particular question. So it highlights to the person that that's what you're doing. You can also invite that person to come and join you on the screen. And that's really, really fun. When they invite you to join your screen, it does this split screen where you're just talking to them and they become a co-host for a moment with you on that particular session. So they can be on screen doing a little bit, oh, a second, I'm going a bit too far ahead. They can be part of that conversation. You can have a co-host, you can have a conversation. One of those things that having a sort of a a talk back conversation between two people is that it breaks that monotony of a, of, a, of a talking head being on the screen. It actually creates a natural interactivity because you've got two people bouncing off each other, which is a lot more fun to watch, a lot more interactive for people who are just watching along and gives you two of you the chance to see the, all the comments coming up. So you can sort of split the work a little bit and cover that together. A bit like a talk back radio show with two co-hosts. Um, you're able to cover a lot more ground when there's two of you on there. So consider inviting other people on there from maybe your industry, from your community, your team members, if you've got some, or even a, a follower who's one of your super fans, if you've got those sort of things, you can invite them on to you know, ask those questions that they know to ask you because they know how to deal with you because they've dealt with you before. That said, make sure there's someone you trust, someone you know, because it can go horribly wrong if that's not the case. You can share photos and videos during your live as well. So you just pop up in the, uh, down the bottom, you can you share your own videos, your own photos from um, your, your camera roll. So for instance, if you're on iOS, on Apple, you can tap the image icon on the right side of the screen to share those photos and videos from your library. So that's a nice, easy way to do it. When you add a photo or a video from your camera roll, your video live stream is going to then shift to the top right corner of the screen. Please note though, you can only see the photos and videos in your camera roll while you're sharing a live video. You can't go back through your whole library of photos and videos. So if you've got some stuff you wanna drag out from the archives, bring them forward into your camera roll now. And this is this is very, very an iOS iPhone thing. Um, so you then got them handy to be able to drag straight out of that and you've got them without having to look 
around all the areas of your phone. Make it as easy as possible. And this is where the preparation side of an Instagram live video really helps to make it a much more smooth experience. Um, you can do raising money like you can do in stories. So you can attach this one, the ACLU, the Australian, uh, the American Council of, um, the American Council of, the American Civil Liberties Union, I think, Civil Liberties, Liber come and say, Civil Liberties Union is one of the things that they're raising money for. Or you could raise money for your local RSPCA shelter. You can raise money for anything that's a registered charity on Facebook or Instagram can be asserted in here. So if you're doing this as a fundraiser or you're just saying, look, I want to actually, because I use only makeup and I only use um, products that don't harm animals, I'm going to raise money for my local um, Peter group. I'm going to play, raise money for the local animal shelter or the prevention of cruelty to animals in some other way, some other charity. Insert that in and it gives people a chance to support the things that you want to support as well in real time. It also gives you the update of where it is. If 124 people have made donations, you can see as it's running how much is being done there. And it'll also show for your viewers as well. They'll be able to see how much money has been raised for that. It's a really fun way of tying your popularity, if you've got popularity, with a good cause as well. So how do you prepare for your live sessions? Well, planning ahead is going to make it a much more engaging and a much more interactive live session for the community that wants to watch you. So before you go live, consider some of these little tips I'm going to give you that make sure that that live succession is going to be as successful as you can possibly make it, right? So Hair Day is a hair salon that specializes in haircuts and color. And they have a very engaged client base. They're very much about dealing with women of color and with the hair that comes from particularly the African community or African-American community. And they've got a team of these really big creative stylists and big personalities and with some serious skills that love sharing the videos they're doing around their business. And they share that work on Instagram. Priya, who's the owner of Hair Day, wants to find a lot more ways to connect with the, with the community that it's around their salon. And they want to start showcasing a lot more videos from the salon stylists with, of course, the permission of the people who are getting that hair work done. So Priya decides to go live on Hair Day's Instagram account because she wants to connect with followers in real time. She thought, well, there's this live video thing that everyone's hopping on. I might as well get my piece. So we're going to take a look at how an example of how Priya would host a successful live broadcast. So this is a bit more of a, this is what it really, really looks like when someone's preparing to go live. So might create a plan and go, I'm going to go for 45 minutes on Wednesday at 5 p.m. That's when I'm going to go live because everything I'm looking at, when I look at engagement on my Instagram business profile, I can see that this is a time when people tend to be available. Then I go, uh, jump starting sales is the goal that I want to have. So what I'm going to be doing is introducing products that help people to say, this is something which helps you to deal with really, really wild out of control hair. So people who are in the audience watching that can help, they can connect themselves to that product, buy it online if they've got a link through to their Instagram shops, or at least let them know that when you come into the salon next, ask for this product by name because it will help that flyaway hair to stay a little less flyaway. A theme could be the theme that you want to carry through it. So the theme is to introduce products and services. She's a business. She's under no pretense that she's doing anything else, but maximizing her opportunity to make money. Breaking down the process of going through the live video, she'll say, okay, what the first thing I'm going to do is announcing the launch of hair color kits. This is a way for people who are in lockdown to take care of their hair with great color kits that we've personally put together for them so that they don't feel like they have to put themselves in danger by going out in public and going to a salon. This is very much an American thing, I guess, because they've got a lot more lockdown restrictions that we have. And I guess they've got a lot more risk than we have as well, because um, it's then that the COVID-19 is running absolutely rampant in America. Thankfully, the vaccinations are going on there are going really fast too, and that's slowing it down a bit. But I suppose we just had recent lockdowns again in Melbourne, for instance, and Perth had one recently. And even, uh, what is it, um, Brisbane had one right back in sort of, early to mid January had a three day lockdown as well. So it can happen with us too. Then she said, she's going to do a live demonstration with the hair color kit to show you how to use it. And then at the end of the session, she's going to share a discount code to help people to get that hair color kit for a discounted price as a thanks for coming on and watching this particular live. And then for her engagement, she said she's going to answer questions about the hair color kit 
during that session. So you can see the plan is very much laid out. Take a screenshot of this or take a photo of it if you must. This is a great way to do it. When are you gonna do it? What is the ultimate goal that you wanna achieve from your live video? What is the theme that comes across in it? Yours could be introducing a product. Yours could be introducing a service. Yours could be interviewing clients as testimonials. The breakdown is what's gonna happen and when. You're gonna launch with this. In the middle, you're gonna do this. And then at the end, you're gonna do this. So it gives you a solid plan of what you're gonna do so you don't go off track. Remember, it's all about whatever you set as your goal here. If the goal is to jumpstart sales, then make sure your breakdown does everything you can do to lead to that. And then with engagement, allow yourself some space in there to answer questions or to interact with comments or to acknowledge people as they come in or to let people do things like voting in polls or even donating to your favorite cause. Hopefully you've got that screenshot. So when it comes to promoting your live session, great way to get that going is to obviously create a post on Instagram that says you've got a live session coming up. Mark your calendars for our live happy hour next Thursday at 5 p.m. Uh, that's Pacific time, but it could be Eastern Standard Time. It could be Central Time. It could be Western Time, whatever you want to put in there. Make it clear that what time it is because your followers are going to be from all kinds of places. So putting in an Australian Eastern Standard Time or going Brisbane time or Perth time or Darwin time will help make it easy for people to be able to market in their calendars to be reminded of when this is going on. You can also increase a little bit of excitement by doing a countdown through your stories. So this case here, they put a story going that they're going live for their happy hour later in three hours and 35 minutes. That can create a little bit more of a, oh, that's right, that's right. It's a reminder that I've got to go to this thing later on. And you can add that info to your profile text as well. So just because you've got perfect profile text in here, you've got your link tree link and all those things you want to do, doesn't mean it always has to stay the same. You can change that around at any point you like. It's your profile bio. Change it up. Make it a little bit more interactive. Make it something which is not just like, here's, my, here's what I do. Say, look, join our live session this Wednesday. It reminds people that there is a live session on Wednesday. Or if you want to point to a landing page, go to our landing page at this address. Or if you're doing something different, we've just received new home color kits. You can buy them here at the link below. That gives you a chance to update things as you need them and means that you're, you're creating your, your profile around what's happening rather than what's happened in the past as well. And you can ask people to, to, to submit questions, go to your stories, put a little question box in and go, what do you want us to talk about during the happy hour? Get their, get their buy-in, get their ideas. So for instance, if I was doing one saying, I want to do a Facebook instructional session this Wednesday at 3 p.m., what would you like me to talk about? And you can go, oh my God, take me through business manager. That thing does my head in. Or take me through what all this news rubbish is. I'd like to know what that story is and why half the, half the pages I go to don't have any posts anymore and prepare accordingly. <laughs> wow, preview your lighting and any of the effects you're gonna use because if you're outside, you may wanna put like a microphone foam on there to protect you from that wind and background noise. It's one of the things that really annoys me about Clubhouse at the moment. Half the people are out jogging or on a treadmill and I'm hearing them talking they're going, <laughs> and the wind's blowing and there's traffic noise and they're not thinking about planning for going on and being on a stage and being brought forward to talk. They've just gone, oh, well, I'm just opening up Clubhouse and then I got dragged on stage. And because I'm very self-promotional, I just want to hop on there and be heard. If you're inviting someone to join your video with you, make sure your guest is ready and you've prepared them with a few topics to discuss. So rather than just pulling them up and say, hey, Jenny, come on to my call. Jenny already knows you're going to do that. Jenny already knows what the questions are that they may want to post on there. So they don't come on there and be a stunned mullet. And, uh, and it's the thing, I don't know what to say. This is really awkward. What am I doing? You don't want that on your live video. It just looks and sounds stupid. And before going live, test your internet connection. <laughs> I have to do that every time before I do one of these. I've had a case where just the other day I did a, um, a, a Zoom call, a Zoom webinar where Canva went down. Now, I'm now at the point where I'm going, Canva's gone down so many times on me in the last six weeks. I'm going to go, I'm not going to use Canva anymore for my presentations because at the moment I can't trust them. But it could be my internet connection. I know that my Vodafone connection is great in Darwin, but not so great in Alice Springs. But my Telstra connection works great in those places. So I need to know that when I'm in a hotel, hotel Wi-Fi cannot be trusted. I have to use a hotspot on my phone. Test your internet connection to make sure you're not dropping out halfway through things. 
And of course, always have a backup plan. That's what I'm going to do now. My Canva presentations will always have a backup on PowerPoint because PowerPoint's right there on my desktop and pull it up. I don't have to rely on a third party online program. I love you Canva, but honestly, you go down too much for me to be able to use reliably live in a live situation. So how to go live is to start a live broadcast, you just go to the tapping the icon, the live icon. So it's going to highlight there, the plus. Once you tap the plus, you select which your live session is. So this one's the live one, but there's other ones like your camera and videos and stories. You want to select the live one. So down the bottom here, where you've got story reels and live, you just go backwards and forwards through what it is you actually want to do with that home button. When you get to live, when you tap that live button, it then allows you to start that session. Now, what you want to do is to interact with people in real time once you are live. So throughout it, keep track of the comments, keep track of the reactions that are coming through, acknowledge them as you're reading them so that people feel like they're being heard and they're actually part of this. A live, which is just, again, a talking head, just broadcasting a message like I am through this is not the most engaging live you can do. A live that has someone who actually acknowledges people in the room a live that actually acknowledges the likes and the comments that are going on is going to be a much more interactive one. So if someone asks you a question like, oh, is that the new mint face mask? You can answer that for them and say, actually, it's the new one that's cucumber and green tea. It's really soothing and nice. So before you start, you want to make sure your session on live is a safe and welcoming place for everyone who's going to participate. So you can use Instagram's comment filter. So go to the profile, tap settings, tap privacy, and then that will allow you to tap your comments. Privacy, yeah, comments, got that one. Then toggle hide offensive comments from off to on. And the AI behind Instagram will look at that and look at all the common swear words and, and uh, some of the moody stuff, which is a bit eesh, and filter that out. So what it'll do is makes it a lot more pleasant experience for the people in there. They don't have to be exposed to that one troll who wants to tell you all about their conspiracy theory. And trust me, there's plenty of them. So that's a really good way to do it. You can also add a manual filter, which allows you to add specific words that you do not want mentioned. So if there's a special Australian version of a word that you know is not a particularly great word, you can add that in there. Most Aussie kind of slang offensive words are in the system already, but you might find it's, you feel safer by putting that in there. Or if you know there's a certain way that people type a, a swear word or an offensive word that sort of breaks up a bit, you can manually filter that one out as well. So to make the most of all your live content, you can save and repurpose your live session. This is something which is so much better now that you can download that video and use it for other things. You can take it over to Facebook. You can take it over to other platforms and then post it somewhere else where you're using it again. A lot of great place to do is to share it to IGTV. So when you do that, it allows you then to have that perpetually in IGTV as part of the, the longer format video that IGTV does. It'll post it to your, your feed in Instagram and then have that watch more on IGTV button that often appears at the bottom with longer content. And it gives you that little bit more reach when people are able to watch it when they're able to do. So share that with IGTV and you can edit the live session into shorter clips if you want to use it in the feed. So you can take little bits of it and just put it in the feed. You can see what your engagement levels were like for that particular post through there. So it allows you to see that, okay, that this particular live video gave me this much in terms of what I want to do in profile visits, what I want to measure in product views or how many people I reached. So the key takeaways for this one, definitely do some live if you want to connect with your followers in very real time, but go live regularly if you do choose to do it. Use it as a chance to introduce your products. Use it as a chance to introduce your services. Use it as a chance to connect a bit of a community of the people who deal with you together. So in the case of um, Jennifer, who doesn't really want to put her face on here so much, I would say, yeah, show your books. Um, actually have the book pointing. If you do a story time, story times are really good on, on, on live videos. If they're books that you've written, you can actually hold the book up and it's just like, <laughs> it's going to see the bottom of your chin in your mouth and then just point to the things that are on the page in the book. That way you don't have to see your face on there. But the reality is people respond to faces because that's how we're geared to deal with it as human beings. Plan ahead. If that's that one thing you take away from today, 
plan ahead. So you've got the, you know exactly where you're going to start, you know exactly what you're going to cover and you know exactly when you're going to finish. And finally, learn more about it at the Facebook Blueprint. This is where it'll have all the instructions for you to follow up. Um, if you didn't capture all this, don't worry. We're actually putting this one on YouTube a little bit later on. Uh, it'll be on my Facebook page at Dante St. James. It'll be on the YouTube channel for, Blue, uh, for Business Station. And it'll also be on mine as well. And don't forget too, that if you want to uh, interact more with the ASBAS Digital Solutions Program, you've got a chance if you've never had a one-to-one -one experience with one of our advisors to can engage with us through ASBAS. So go to businessstation.com.au. You can select myself or any one of the other um, amazing advisors around the three states of Western Australia, Queensland, and where I am in the Northern Territory. Well, I'm going to Queensland later today. So I might be doing a few live ones um, with people over there via Zoom. Um, so do that. Please take advantage of it because your first one, if you've never had one, is free. Your second one is $44 and your third one and any up to 24 hours of engagement of the program, which is you know, the webinars you watch, the workshops you watch, the the one-to-one -one sessions you have, you get up to 24 hours of stuff you can deal with, uh, whatever you want in amongst all that. So use your one-to-ones, especially if you've never done one, you get that first one for free. So thank you so much for taking some time out to spend on your business rather than working in your business all the time. Um, I've got a plane to catch, so I better get out of here. Thank you and have a fantastic day. It's certainly been fun bringing the world of Instagram live and stories to you this morning.